In the 1990s, the government said it was giving free access to third level education to almost anyone raised in Ireland. But for many people now, that free means paying €3,000 a year. How did that happen? And what's happening in third level that means those free fees aren't going anywhere soon? Rewind to 1996. The then Minister for Education, Niamh Bratnock, announced plans for a fundamental change to how we access university and college courses. The proposal is that we take the expenditure, we level the playing pitch really in a very much more equitable and transparent way, and we make access to third level an aspiration for everybody. There would no longer be anyone paying tuition fees to access third level, and that money would be covered from government tax revenue. Approximately 90,000 students are continuing their education beyond leaving cert, and approximately 60,000 of that 90,000 do not pay fees at the moment because their fees are paid by the state or by the European community. So what the government has proposed in the budget is to eliminate fees for approximately one third of students in higher education. In many ways, that was a follow-on from the much admired decision 30 years previously, which did the same for access to secondary school. That gave hundreds of thousands of children from poorer backgrounds a chance to go to secondary school without becoming a financial burden on their parents. The government wanted to do the same for third level. When the Minister for Education, Neve Brannock, proposed the abolition of third level fees, she must have hoped that she would be hailed as the new Donna O'Malley. The word radical was not in my mind when I framed these proposals. I'm a realist and I had to deal with the crying needs of our young children who thirst for education so much. I just think access to education, first level, second level and third level, should be a right and not a privilege. Neve Brannock was the Education Minister and from the Labour Party, but the decision faced criticism from parts of the left. Some said it wasn't aimed at truly disadvantaged families, but at the middle and lower middle class PAYE workers, whose income level meant they didn't qualify for grants and therefore had to pay fees. The critics said the best way to achieve the aim of getting more working class and lower middle class people into third level wasn't scrapping the fees, but increasing grant thresholds and spending the cash on making sure poorer children finish secondary school. In fact, if it has an effect, it has a negative effect in that it is directing very scarce resources to people who need it least, to the children of the rich, to the children who, who would go to third level in any event. The poor can already, uh, the fees are paid for them, so yes. you really you're charming the silver out of the pockets of the poor to subsidise, to further subsidise oh, the no, middle classes. No, Is I that take, not the argument? No, no, no. I really take great exception to that. Despite the criticism, the decision to abolish fees was implemented. Yet today, we have what the Union of Students in Ireland says are the highest fees in the European Union, bar the UK, and they're leaving. So what's that about? Like many things nowadays, it starts with the recession. Between 2008 and 2015, while the country was on the brink of bankruptcy, the government cut funding to universities and colleges by almost 40%. In an effort to recover some of that money, which was cut from the sector, students going to college were asked to pay up. In 2008, the payment was put at €850, Euro, and it blew up to €3,000 by 2015. That was part of what was called the National Recovery Plan. About 60% of students have to pay, as they don't qualify for grants. These payments aren't officially fees, but contributions, and are supposed to fund specific activities, like exams and student services. But in the last few years, despite the government having increased funding again, the contributions have been used to prop up the finances of the third level sector, which by most accounts, is in the middle of a financial crisis. University heads have described the situation as calamitous. They want things to change. But we now need the government to provide adequate levels of funding, not just for the, the current crop of students, but we're facing a huge increase in student numbers uh, over the years to come. In the meantime, students say the payments are adding to the already huge expense of attending third level, from rent to transport to books to equipment. The USI says it's pushing people from poorer backgrounds away from education and they want things to change too. What type of change is the question? A major official report was published in 2016. It listed three options for solving the financial issues in the third level sector. One, scrap the current contributions and increase state funding, which would hit government coffers hardest. Two, keep the payment and increase state funding. 
which the government has done in part since, but the financial crisis in the sector continues. Or three, and most contentiously, introduce a model where students would attend without paying a fee, but pay after, through deduction from their income later in life. That's been opposed by student groups. The UK started out with a small uh, loan scheme. It started out as a thousand pounds, and now they're talking about increasing it to sixteen thousand pounds. That is an astonishing amount of money, and we already have the second highest to them. So it's a very slippery slope. You introduce fees, and they just spiral and spiral and spiral. No decisions have been made yet. In the meantime, the government has asked economic analysts at the European Commission to examine the options. They're expected to report back early next year. Until then, your fees or contributions are unlikely to be going anywhere fast.